Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello, hello. So we're continuing our series of shows, Spiritual States, and today we'd like to talk about light, about different kinds, types of light, what is light, how does it influence a person, how does a person feel the influence of the light. Maybe we can start from the very first question. Please define what light is. Spiritual light is the influence of the Creator over the desire to receive pleasure called created being. Is there a difference between light and the Creator, upper force, between these concepts? Yeah. There's the source itself called the Creator, the source of all that exists. And there's the light, which is his influence over his creation. Can we say that light is pleasure, fulfillment? That's already when the created being receives the light, depends in what way, then it can be felt as pleasure, but can also be felt as the opposite, meaning light isn't always the light. It is an influence coming from the Creator, but the created being needs to be ready to feel it. And according to his equivalence of form with the light, can feel pleasure and delight from that influence, or even the opposite. So it all depends on the created being. Yeah? I mean, the light's neutral. The light's neutral. And the created being can change itself. What types of light are there? Many different types of light, uh, many different types of influence of the Creator over His created beings. There's direct light, reflected light, surrounding light, a light from above down, from below up, that is divided into many other different kinds of light. Light is simply the influence of the Creator and there can be many, many such influences. Well, if we take the main types of life, like, light, like there's the direct and surrounding, what is the difference? Direct light is what the created being feels as coming directly from the Creator, and surrounding light is what he feels as the Creator influencing him through some kind of indirect ways. Can we say that direct light is that which I feel directly within myself as the influence of the Creator, and the surrounding light is through different occurrences, people, events. Yeah, you can say that too. How does the light influence a person constantly, or it depends on how a person draws it upon himself, only then does it influence him? The thing is that we're constantly in an ocean of light, but how do we feel it? Being prepared for one or another kind of influence of the Creator over us, that already depends on us. So we can't say anything concrete. Everything that comes from the Creator is called light and a person, according to the measure to which he is compatible with the Creator, he more strongly and more fully feels that influence. So, on my part, on the part of the created being, there is the conscious um, perception of light and unconscious, right? Can we say that the light influences me only consciously, or can it influence me even when I'm unconscious of it, like a child in this world? The light is something that surrounds us constantly, working on us, we exist inside of it. But the thing is that in Kabbalah, we're talking about the direction of the influence of the light from the Creator to us, or how can we awaken it upon ourselves, this influence? A person who is an attainment, he constantly feels the light consciously or sometimes unconsciously too? A person who is in attainment, he consciously awakens the influence of the light over him. 
А есть, когда на него тоже... So when he consciously awakens it on himself, that's one light. And when he doesn't do it consciously, then... Ну вот все, допустим, человек живет в этом мире. I'll put it this way. A person lives in this world. He feels different descents, ascends, good mood, bad mood, different situations occur. It is all the influence of the light. Of course, this is how we feel the light. It's, it's transformed in us into different scenes, forms, shapes. But in general, besides the light and the desire that's opposite to it, there's nothing. And these two opposite qualities, the light, which is the desire to bestow, to fulfill, and the desire, the opposite, to receive these two qualities, positive, negative, we can call them. Actually, they're the only ones that exist in nature, and their combination is seen to us as different objects in nature. I'm trying to understand what's the difference between a person that directly attains this light and a person that, as if the surrounding light works on him. What's the difference? The thing is that an ordinary person feels himself, to some extent, receiving from the existing all-fulfilling light certain influences on the still vegetative, animate, human levels that appears in him, and among that he exists a person that has lifted himself to the sensation uh, not of the result of the light, but the source itself. Besides the still vegetative, animate, and human nature around him, he also feels lights. Meaning the influence over in Alpha nature of a higher order. I think that's, uh, but what? It's a difference that can. It's because a person feels the source, the reason for what exists, and not only the, its results. Yeah, and that's that gives them satisfaction, pleasure. It is from the desire to attain the meaning of creation, the source of it, the Creator Himself in relation to the Creator, etc. What I'm trying to understand is qualitatively what's the difference between a person who attains the reason for that which happens around him, all the events, catastrophes, or good things, and a person that simply sees the results of it all. He also experiences the results on himself. So, okay, fine, I know what's the reason? What does it give me? Besides, pleasure, delight, that, yeah, I know what's the reason. It gives you the ability to attain the purpose of existence, the meaning of life, and to change the meaning. Uh, to draw the influence of the surrounding light so that somehow to consciously understand what is going on, is it possible to only do it through the source texts? Or is it the only how to enhance the influence of the light over me? This is something that you can do by correcting your ego into more altruistic forms, meaning into altruism, into well, mainly the main condition is love another as yourself, which is known to all. In that case, to the measure to which a person comes closer to it, he starts feeling through which exists 
the upper governing force. So light has altruistic qualities. Yeah. And in order to feel it in our world, according to the law of equivalence of form, I need to implement this altruistic quality on something outside of me, suppose on another person. Yeah. And to that measure, I start feeling it. Yeah. For it, the light. You say that the group is a lens that focuses the light. What's the relation? In order for us to start feeling nature for what it really is and the Creator as its source, for that we need to rise above our ego in order to have the ability to rise above our ego, we need certain forces, certain means in order to rise above it. And for that, there is the opportunity of gathering in a group and together with the group to try and ascend. First of all, in the group, you can see how egoistic you are the measure to which you need to change yourself from the desire to receive, from being egoistic or, to the contrary, to diminish, lower yourself, subordinate yourself to the group, etc. Many Kabbalists, practically all Kabbalists, write about it. That's how a person can diminish his ego develop in him qualities that are similar to the Creator, and elevate himself, lift himself, lift himself, in order to really start feeling the upper nature. So my egoism, my nature, my true nature, is like a filter that hides that light from my sensations. Yeah? So the light passes through this egoistic prism, my egoistic nature, and I can't directly feel it, but only as kind of, but only indirectly as a result. Yeah, I suppose. In conclusion, I'd like to ask the technology itself of how to draw upon myself light. I read in the source texts, Bala Sulam writes in the introduction to the book of Tess, item 155. He says, therefore, We must ask, why then did the Kabbalists obligate every person to study the wisdom of Kabbalah? And he says, indeed, there is a great thing about it which should be publicized. There is a wonderful and valuable remedy to those who engage in the wisdom of Kabbalah, although they do not understand what they are learning. Through the yearning and the great desire to understand what they are learning, they awaken upon themselves the light that surrounds their souls. Meaning when a person reads a text that he doesn't understand, by that he awakens upon himself the surrounding light, his soul aspires to reveal what the... How does the technology itself work? The thing is, when we study Kabbalistic texts, they talk about the structure of the soul and about the structure of the entire system of the spiritual forces. And by that, we awaken those spiritual forces and they more intensively work on us. And that's how we, by awakening them, develop more quickly in the right direction. Therefore, studying Kabbalah, being engaged in Kabbalah, furthermore in a state where we do it in a group, in short, um, within a certain amount of people, in a certain quantity of people that aspire for the same goal of revealing the Creator, revealing the world, this kind of study truly propels a person. Well, a person sits with others in a group, reading, suppose, the Book of Zohar, 
uttering certain unclear words to him. Even if he understands their meaning in Hebrew, he doesn't understand the real meaning of these words. And it says that by his desire, even if he doesn't understand anything, he awakens upon himself the surrounding light that will later on become inner light for him. By the way, it doesn't say anything about a group. So what I'm trying to understand is there's several methods, meaning there's a method where you work in a group and you draw the light, where you read a book, text that you don't understand. There are many particular methods, ways in order to draw upon yourself the surrounding light. It's studying, it's even when you're alone, all the more when you're in the group. It is any kind of work for the sake of mankind only if it's correct and true, when you disseminate, publicize the wisdom of Kabbalah, help people, etc. So, there are several methods of how to awaken the influence of the light over us. Yes, good deeds, yes. So, I understand that what does this light do? It brings a person to the recognition of evil, of his egoistic nature. That's the first thing that it does. Then this light awakens in a person the desire to become corrected. Yes. And the third thing is that it brings a person to an inner prayer plea, request for correction. And then there is a correction, and he feels it as inner light that previously for him was on the outside. Yeah, you can say that too. That's the process. Yeah. And when all that happens, and a person feels that light as inner light, what then? Then or then there are no further questions. A person who starts feeling the upper light, he starts developing inside this upper light. <clears throat> His spiritual eyes as if open up. It's like we see in what we see in sunlight, a Kabbalist sees in spiritual light. And for him, another side of creation becomes revealed that shows him, tells him about all that exists that's hidden from others but not from him. So when a person receives pleasure in our world, he no longer asks the question of why and what for, but he simply enjoys, he's in that fulfillment, well, until he becomes empty again, drained, and again and again. But in spirituality, when a person feels that inner light, what next? What then? To the contrary, he looks for ways of how to correctly influence on how to influence on others in a good, kind way to delight them and the Creator. So he has the thought of, okay, I'm fulfilled. What about others? Obviously, since the feeling of good overflows him, what he feels from the Creator, he wishes to extend it from himself to others. Okay, thank you very much. Spiritual states, light, the influence of the light. Till next time, all the best.